In this section, we discuss interest rate risk and the concept of duration. So first off, interest rate risk, we should already know, um, is the risk that the price of an existing bond would fall as market interest rates increase. So this we already observed when we uh, did a bond valuation, wherein we saw that when interest rates go up, the price of an existing bond would go down. Uh, yes, too, when interest rates go down, the price of a bond goes up, but the risk is the fact that your bond would go down in value as interest rates um, go up. So that's the inverse relationship that is widely talked about in the bond market. Again, keep in mind that this risk is with respect to a bond that you already are holding, not brand new bonds, because brand new bonds would sell. Um, at face value to pay you the prevailing market interest rate. But for an existing bond, your coupon rate is already locked in, and so as rates go up, the value of that bond would go down because since the coupon it pays would stay unchanged. And this type of problem is more so with long-term bonds. They are more sensitive to interest rate risk than short-term bonds. This shouldn't surprise you because if you buy a 10-year bond that pays you 5%, that's how much you're going to get paid every year for 10 years, that 5%. But think about this. If you buy a short-term bond that pays you 5%, you earn 5% for one year. So let's say that later, say one year from toward the ending of the year, interest rates go up to, to let's say, 8% the 10-year bond will continue to pay 5%, but the one-year bond matures shortly, and it can be reinvested, the proceeds can be reinvested to earn the higher prevailing interest rate. And so, the long-term bond holder is more adversely exposed to uh, rising interest rates, to the risk of rising interest rates. The short-term bond holder isn't quite as hard-pressed. And we note here that for the same maturity, zero coupon bonds are even more sensitive to interest rate risk than coupon paying bonds. Well, look at it, look at this uh, look at it this way: you buy a ten-year uh, coupon bond that pays you five percent per year. Okay, now your friend buys a zero coupon bond. Well, keep in mind that the two bonds have the same face value of a thousand dollars. Now, if you if you purchase the coupon bond paying you 8%, it means every year you receive $50. Let's say interest rates go up. If interest rates go up, although your coupon rate is, uh, stays fixed at 5% per year, but remember, the $50 you receive from the coupon bond can be reinvested in the market at the higher prevailing interest rate. So, although rising interest rates would hurt your bond, but you are not quite as worse off as your friend who purchased a zero coupon bond because your coupons can be reinvested at higher and higher interest rates, meaning as interest rates rise over the holding period of the bond. Your friend who purchased a zero coupon bond receives no coupons and so he or she is unable to take advantage of rising interest rates and as a result the zero coupon bond if it were to be sold in the uh, open market prior to maturity would fetch a lower price than your bond because buyers of the existing zero coupon bond would say well look over here interest rates are rising and we can't even take advantage of it we're gonna have to hang on to this bond until maturity ten years from now but for your bond, they'll probably say, okay, we know that we're still locked in at 5% coupon rate for the next several years, but at least the coupons we receive can be reinvested in the market at the higher prevailing interest rates. And so for that reason, zero coupon bonds are more sensitive to interest rate risk than coupon paying bonds. There is yet another type of bond risk called reinvestment rate risk which is the risk of a decline in interest and in interest income due to a fall in interest rates. Now, as interest rates fall, interest payments from bonds are reinvested at lower and lower interest rates. And as you would imagine, short-term bonds are more exposed to this type of risk because as they mature in short order, their proceeds would have to be reinvested at lower interest rates. 
with the falling uh, interest rates. And so, as you can see, uh, reinvestment rate risk is kind of like the opposite in terms of uh, its effect uh, with respect to interest rate risk. So if you buy a short-term bond, a bond that matures one year from now and interest rates fall, well, sorry, you're going to be reinvesting your proceeds at the lower prevailing interest rates. But your friend who purchased a long-term bond, paying him or her, let's say, for example, 5%, will continue to enjoy that higher rate over the course of the bond. And in the same way, if you buy a coupon-paying bond, as you know, um, you, you're also exposed to some measure of reinvestment rate risk because as interest rates go down, the coupons you receive would have to be reinvested at the lower prevailing interest rates. One major way to capture the impact of uh, changes in interest rates on the price of a bond is duration, which is the weighted average time that it takes to receive all cash flows from an investment in the case of a bond, all coupon payments and principal. So that's the basic definition of duration, and you can see it here. All right, this is a, a three-year bond right here, n of three, and if you observe here, we have the first year here, the second year, and the third year. To each of these years, you find the present value of the corresponding. Uh, coupon payments or if you like the corresponding cash flow. This f present value of the first cash flow divided by the bond price which is a common denominator to all of them represents a weight. That's where the weight here comes from. So the weight for the first period of this bond is this present value of the first coupon cash flow divided by the bond price. The weight for this second period is the present value of the second coupon payment divided by the price and the weight for this third and final period is the present value of the last set of cash flows which would be the last coupon payment plus the bonds face value that present value divided by price so it is indeed it is indeed the weighted average time all right you're waiting the times uh, at which each of the cash flows is received. But it so happens that this calculus here enables us to capture the impact of interest rate risk in that the longer the duration of an asset, the greater is the impact of a given interest rate change on the price of that asset. So what this means is if, you ha if there are two bonds, A and B, bond A has a duration of two years, bond B has a duration of two and a half years, bond B would react more adversely to a given interest rate change than bond A because its duration is longer, 2.5 years. Now to understand that in context, remember that as interest rates go up, bond prices fall. What we're saying here therefore is that even though the price of bond A would fall as interest rates go up, as well as the price of bond B, but because bond B has the longer duration of 2.5 years, its value would fall more drastically than that of bond A. In this example, we calculated the duration of this three-year bond to find it to be 2.79 years. And by the way, the duration of a bond would always be less than its maturity if it is a coupon paying bond. The longest duration a bond can have would have to be its maturity, by the way and that will be a zero coupon bond because if these are zero if this is a zero coupon bond think about it this would be zero here this would be zero here and uh, the only thing that you'd have here would be the face value and uh, when you factor this out you'll find it to be equal to one and that's going to be multiplied by three would be three so the duration of a zero coupon bond would always be its equal to its maturity. For coupon paying bonds again, duration would always be less than the maturity. So you might see a trick question, for example, giving asking you what you think is the duration of a bond, say of a three year bond, and um, you might say greater than three, equal to three, less than three. If the statement says what's the duration of a three year bond that pays coupons, and again, 
the choices are equal to 3 less than 3 greater than 3? Well, because it's a coupon paying bond, it's not going to be equal to 3. And it, the dur duration cannot be greater than 3, so it must be less than 3. Right? So that's important to note. Here is a general example here. Calculate the duration of a four-year 8% coupon bond with a yield to maturity of 6% where interest is paid semi-annually. So remember, if I go back here, to ca calculate duration, you need the price. In this example, the price is provided, is provided. So here, you would need to calculate the price yourself, and that's what we did here in step number one. Now, armed with the price, we can plug it in here, and together with all the other uh, ent entries, we determine the duration to be 3.6 years. So now, what's up with this duration? We already know that the longer the duration, the more, um, the more would be the adverse impact that rising interest rates would have on the value of a bond. Well, it so happens that by appeal to Macaulay duration, we can actually obtain a pretty decent approximation as to how much a bond's price would change when interest rates uh, change. But typically, if interest rates change by a small amount, we get an even better and better approximation. And here's the model here. This model says that the percentage change in the price of an asset is approximately equal to its duration multiplied by this term, the change in interest rate, divided by 1 plus the current interest rate. Now, the negative here is actually directional. It simply is telling you that the change in price would be opposite to the change in interest rates. That's all it means. So the terms are explained here. So here's an example. Suppose the yield to maturity on the bond we just, whose duration we just calculated above is expected to increase by 50 basis points. Now, remember, 50 basis points is 0.5%. Calculate the percentage, the approximate percentage change in the price of this bond as a result of this increase in interest rates. So the duration we calculated was 3.6 years. All right, I bring them all the input up here. The current interest rate is 6%. So you plug it in there, and the change in interest rate is 0.5%. In decimal form, it is 0 0.005. So this tells us. Uh, preserving the negative here, that the value of this bond would go down by about 1.7 percent. Well, 1.7 percent of the price we calculated earlier, let's go back here. That's the price we calculated earlier, that's the duration we computed. So 1.7 percent of this price we calculated earlier, which is what I show here, comes out to be about eighteen dollars and nineteen cents. So what this says, what this means is, if interest rates go up by fifty basis points, the price of this bond would decline by one point seven percent approximately, or by eighteen dollars and nineteen cents. And by the way, we can actually verify the exact new bond price with a change in interest rates. Remember, to calculate the price of the bond, we need the yield to maturity, which semi-annually would be this, 3.25%. Remember, initially, yield is 6%. So if it goes up by 50 basis points, the new yield to maturity would be 6.5%. So semi-annually, it's 3.25%. This is the coupon payment, the maturity period, and the face value. So the calculated price of the bond would be 1052.10. .10. Well, as you can see, if you subtract 1052.10 .10 from 1071, which is what I'm going to do here, 1071, or 1070 rather, 0.2, right, minus the new bond price with the 50 basis point um, change in interest rates, 10.52. 0.10. All right, that's the change in price, about 18.10. All right, which is not too far from what we got here. And of course, this is actually a lot better. Um, as you know, I um, I have a little bit of rounding error since I retyped in these values. But nevertheless, you know, as a percent of 10.70.2. All right, that's actually 1.69 percent. So that's pretty. Um, pretty close, almost the same. All right, so what this is suggesting is you can predict what the change 
in the value of an instrument would be given its duration based on different projections of uh, interest rate levels going forward. Bond portfolio managers use this, uh, con apply this concept extensively. Some facts about duration are summarized here. Right? Um, they include that duration is measured in years, even though bonds pay coupons semi-annually, but you have to calculate duration in years. All right? We note here that duration of coupon paying bond is always less than maturity. We already explained that, and that duration of a zero coupon bond or a, or a single payment instrument would always be equal to its maturity, as it should, because duration is the weighted average time to receive all payments. And since for a zero coupon bond you get nothing until maturity, it means that duration has to be equal to maturity. And we note here that the higher the duration of an asset, the greater would be the effect of an interest rate change on the price of that asset. We also note that the longer the maturity of an asset, the longer would, the greater would be the duration of that asset. The lower the coupon rate, the greater the duration. So coupon rate duration are inversely related as well. The lower the initial yield to maturity on a bond, the greater would be the duration. Those two are also inversely related. Interestingly, bond portfolio managers have determined that the relationship between change in the price of a bond and the change in interest rate is actually not linear, it is convex. And that this convexity increases with the duration of a bond. Look at this example right here which I uh, did. All right, so here's a bond and what I did on spreadsheet actually which is not shown here is to calculate the price of, of this bond at different interest rates, different yields to maturity. And of course you note here that as interest rates increase from 1% to 10%, 19 etc. etc. notice that the price of the bond keeps going down, keeps going down, keeps going down. But it is actually not going down in a linear fashion. Notice how it curves. That's the convexity. Well, one another way to look at this is from right to left, which is that as interest rates go down, the price of a bond goes up. But it doesn't go up linearly. It goes up uh, in a curvature form. And of course, this is the corresponding duration for each interest rate level here. I also calculated the duration of the bond. So the duration of the bond, as you can see, increases as interest rates decrease. The duration of a bond increases with uh, the price of a bond as interest rates decrease. However, the increase in the price is convex, while the increase in duration is linear. But one of the facts that we note here is that Bonds with high convexity are preferred because for such bonds, their prices fall more slowly as interest rates rise, but rise more quickly as interest rates fall. This is an evidence that is often pursued in an investments course. Alright, that concludes this segment of the presentation.